Hey everyone, and welcome to the fifth and final week of study. We have made it. Yes. A few more days left of study to go, but Nikki, it always goes by so fast. I know, I know. You guys have done a great job. I'm so proud of you if you've made it to this point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you have it, maybe you're behind a little bit. That's okay. Yeah. The beauty of online Bible studies that you and Melissa have built is the whole idea of doing the study when it fits into your schedule. Yes. And don't no be, pressure. Right. Don't beat yourself up if you're a little behind. Yeah. Pick up right where we are. That's right. So we have done four decisions up until this point, mm-hmm. and we have one more that we're going to be talking about today, mm-hmm. which is to find the familiar faithfulness of God. And I love this one because it helps us, like we talked about, remember Mm -hmm. what God has done. Mm -hmm. And you can do that through journaling or just different things that he has come through before. And so it's just, it's a wonderful decision. We're going to learn more about, but before we get into hearing what Nikki has to say about it, we have another doubt diary that we're closing out with. Aren't they nice to Mm -hmm. see different perspectives? And so today we get to hear from a dear friend of mine. I feel like I say that every week, but truly (laughs) a dear friend of mine. You're friends with everybody. That's what I love about you. Thanks, Nikki. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Her name is Jess, and she's going to be talking a little bit about um, raising kids. And if you don't have kids, that's okay. We have an impact um, with friends or maybe with other kids in our life that might not be our own. And so I'm excited to hear what she has to say, and then you respond. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm on staff here at Proverbs. My husband and I, we have two boys, Josiah and Lucas. And if you're a parent or if you have kids in your life in any capacity, then you may face a similar struggle to as the one I do. You see, my greatest desire is that my boys would know the Lord intimately. My fear, my doubt, that I'm not doing a good job of helping them achieve that. But then I have to stop and remember that my job is to teach them about God, who he is, help them understand his character, and allow them to see me walking on my faith in a very tangible way. And the rest is up to the Lord and the Holy Spirit. I have to let the Holy Spirit do its job. So if you're a parent like me, or or if you face this doubt, here are some truths that we can hold on to as we navigate through this struggle. All right, Nikki, so you're a mom as well. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you can relate to what Jess was (laughs) talking about, about making sure she's doing the parenting thing right. Mm. But what do you have to say to Jess? Well, Jess, first of all, none of us are doing it right. So (laughs) let me just set you free from that right now. We're all just kind of winging it and just seeing what happens. Yes, truly. Seeing what happens. (laughs) Yes. uh, And Jess is a really great mom. And Mm -hmm. the fact that she's, you know, wrestling with this shows me that her kids are going to be great. Yeah. And, you know, like Kendra said earlier, no matter if you have kids or don't have kids, uh, this this teaching this week is going to be something that can really tie into Jess's struggle. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that is really important that I don't think we take enough time to think about in our lives is what we're leaving when we leave this earth. Mm. And so each of us have a legacy, whether we have kids or not, that we're leaving. There's things that we're building. Uh, And, you know, this week we're going to see how Noah really built his life out of faith. But then we see just a few generations down the road into the Tower of Babel that they're building things out of fear. Mm. And so as you're thinking about your own life and the things that you're leaving behind as we're each building something, it's important to remember to make sure that we're tying in God's faithfulness in everything that we're doing. Okay. So as soon as Noah exits the ark, we see this final and fifth decision to find the familiar faithfulness of God Mm -hmm. come into play because Noah's first reaction was not like, I don't, what would you have done if you got off the ark after being on there for over a year (sighs) and seasick like what would you have done first honestly probably just sat down on the ground like it is stable I need something just to like firmly yeah. plant myself so lay in the sun yeah. yes get some vitamin <laughs> D but you know Noah's first reaction was to build an altar and to sacrifice mm. and worship to God and we know that this was a place where he felt God's familiar faithfulness. We don't see God telling Noah to do this. He just knew that's what he was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think doubt tries to convince us like it has with Jess that we really don't know what we're doing and it's not going to matter and it's not going to change. Right. And, you know, nothing we're really doing is going to leave a lasting legacy. But really you are. Mm. Each of us, like you just showing up to this study is building Great point. God's familiar faithfulness in your life that will extend into other people. So here's my takeaway though from the ending of this biblical account because 
at the end, we do finally see words from Noah. Mm -hmm. And uh, (laughs) they're not the best words coming from the best situation (laughs) that you're going to study about. Um, But one of the things that Noah does at the very very end is he speaks both a curse and a blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we know because we have Romans um, 12, verse 14, it says this, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, Mm -hmm. that we are not actually supposed to ever speak curses over anyone. And I don't know a mom that would, you know, speak a curse over our family. And would a curse be equivalent to like maybe a negative word? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Something, something not life giving. Yeah. Um, And you'll study this week that this curse that Noah was speaking was actually something prophetic that we see later in the scripture. So we're not going to use that as an example, but this idea of speaking blessings and not curses, Mm -hmm. you know, that our, our words hold life. Yes. And so as you know, you're building your legacy and you're finding the familiar faithfulness of God, I think one of the best ways you can erase doubt from is what I'm doing working, is it going to matter, is to just speak blessings. So Kendra today, like I just bless you Mm -hmm. with the peace that comes from heaven over everything that you have coming down the line in the next couple of weeks because your legacy is going to be impacted Mm -hmm. by that. And see, the more I speak that kind of faith to you, it does something inside of me and it strengthens me. And so as we close this out, you know, if you don't take anything else. I hope you take more, but if you don't take anything else away from this study, just speak blessing over people. Use the word of God, you know, ask the Lord what to to bless people with by his power and his might and watch God build a legacy that will last. Yeah. Not one that is based out of fear, but one that is based out of faith through the words and the deeds and the things that you're doing in your life. So, so good, Jess, I know that it is a hard thing raising boys and girls yeah. um, and the generation that we're in because there's a lot of fear. Yeah. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of unknown. But we can hold tight to the familiar faithfulness through worship like we see Noah doing. Mm -hmm. So, well, Kendra, you know, we've worked through all five of these decisions now. So I'm super curious, which one has impacted you the most? I wish I had my book with me because you could see it's highlighted on every single page. (laughs) Um, But I would say the one that I have learned the most from and I'm holding on to is decision four, which is to remember who is in charge. Mm. And I think it's because my natural personality is to control and make sure things are tied up in a nice bow and I get things done. And I can sometimes be very selfish and think that I'm the only one that's impacted and really God is bigger than that. He sees the full picture yeah. um, of what's going to happen. And so I just need to rest in the fact that he has it in control. Yeah. He is in control. Yeah. So he's in charge. He is. In, yes. He's in charge. That's good. Nikki. Thank you so much. There's always something to learn. So yeah, he is in charge. Yes, he is in charge and we're in control of our obedience. I love that. Thank you for being so authentic with us through this study. Yes. I'm great. learning more and more um, through different books that we study together as an online Bible study community mm-hmm. of things I need to work on. And so that one speaks right to me. I understand. I um, so Nikki, as we wrap up this study, it's been five weeks. We have a few more days left to go. Um, do you have anything you want to say to the OBSers that have joined for your mm, flooded study? Yeah. Well, thank you to you and Melissa and Proverbs for allowing this mm-hmm. to be an online Bible study. It's been a blessing to get to walk through this with all of our amazing yeah. friends. Um, but here's what I want to say. Just because we closed the pages of Noah's biblical account mm-hmm. this week and we closed the pages of this book flooded, it doesn't mean that doubt is going to just suddenly leave us. That's and good. so I encourage you to keep pulling out these decisions and keep making them every single day. They're really simple decisions. I didn't make them like I played with like some poetic words and <laughs> I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, just keep it simple. Yeah. And so I kept it really simple so that you and I could remember to take action That's smart. with these decisions. That's so smart. keep keep them close, put them on a sticky note, put them in your Bible um, and just just keep deciding to make the decisions that help you to rise above doubt. Well, thank you, Nikki. Thank you for joining us every Monday and for the teaching videos on Friday. Um, Everyone, we have loved studying with you. There's a few more days left, but I think I speak for Nikki and I. Um, We're just very grateful for you, and we've loved walking alongside you um, in this message. So we say it every time, but (laughs) when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything, and we hope you have a fabulous week. Bye, everyone.